Hi, welcome back to another episode of 100 mile an hour Kawasaki AR50 and in today's episode I make this so I can find out where the leak or leaks which are still there are in this intake that I've made which I may need to remake. Okay, leak down tester. This is my rough plan of attack. I haven't got any drawings or anything, I'm just going to make it up as I go along. I uh, procured this from eBay, I'll leave a link in the description, it came next day, pretty good for £12-£13 I think, 0-15 to 15 PSI so I've been told 6 PSI is the magic number so pretty good, got quite good uh, fidelity there with that gauge. Got these some screw fix, they're quarter BSP fit in there and quarter pipe which I've got some quarter inch uh, internal diameter pipe there so the gauge will go in there the barb will go there the barb will then connect up to the inlet I'm going to make that so it fits in the inlet rubber so the hose will connect them up and then to pressurize it I found this it's off a pit bike it's some random thread on there not sure what it is I'm going to turn that down and do an M8 I know it's not a pop pipe thread but a bit of PGFE tape bit of a long stick out I just want to get that Squared off and get center in it. I'll turn it down a bit, hopefully. Just narrowing that down so I can get it back through the center of the chuck. Right, I've axled that end off because I don't need quite as much. All the way through, just finish this off in the vise. Back with you in a minute. Okay, flip this round now, and I've got a 29 drill, which apparently is the drill size for a quarter BSP tap. So I'm going to whack that in there, see how it goes. I don't know, it might need a bit of a sharp. I'm going to see how it cuts first before I butcher it trying to sharpen it myself. Quarter PSP tap I happen to have. I think it came with a load of bits I've got with this lathe. Very lucky. I've got lots of bonus bits I thought I'd never use until I need them. So, second hand stuff, you can get some right good bits. And I think I'm just going to turn this man you welly. Right, I'm just going to put a little bit of a flat on here just so there's something for it to grip onto. Probably not too much, I'm going to run out of it. I'm just going to put, make it a little bit flat there. as far as I'm going to go, hopefully that is far enough for it to go in. There you go, I've got a good blowout now, take the valve out, give it a clean out and I'll probably just put the tap on the other way just to try and get a slightly better thread. I'm a bit worried I turned it down a bit too far so I may have to throw it in the bin. We shall see. Okay, test fit. 
everything was plugged in, wound it in. I've used an extra O-ring. I've got an O-ring kit, so I put an O-ring on there as well to help that seal. PTFE on the gauge at the top, and then this little barb I've put in again with PTFE tape. I did have a bit of a leak around there. I may mill this a bit flat because I think it's where it goes down. It doesn't cut in as well, so but I'm losing thread. That's the only problem. So hopefully that should hold pressure it seems to be it's stuck at 7.2 and it's not really moved so I'm going to call that uh, done just need to make up the bit for the intake and then figure out a way of blocking the exhaust okay I made this bit it's basically a lump of aluminium fashioned out that fits over the exhaust manifold it's not going to seal to that so I need to make a seal and I'll use some rubber. I've got an old uh, inner tube. Just going to roughly measure out that. Sit on there. Yeah, I've got a couple. Just take up any discrepancies. Bolt all that up, and hopefully that should seal the exhaust up. So after using this Schrader valve, I had a few issues of getting some air in there. So I went on Amazon, bought some of these blood pressure inflation things. They've got their own little relief valve. So it's what I've done. Basically. Grafted that on there, I've used these fuel hose clamps, took the Schrader valve itself out of this, so it's just a hole effectively, rather than unscrewing that and re-drilling and tapping it. Uh, and I can now pump this up. My gauge is inconveniently in the wrong place. I don't know if you can see, but I've put a finger on the end of there, built pressure up. So, and then I made this off camera on the lathe, just a piece of aluminium, made it the same design as the carb mount with a little groove there so that sits in there's like a little rubber bit there and that sits into the back of the carb mount Okay, got the bung in there, secure. I'm just gonna try and pump this up now, see if you get any pressure. Okay, so it's pumping up, but it is going down fairly quick. So I'm gonna keep pumping that and give it a squirt, see if we've got any. see straight away I've got a leak on this manifold by the looks of it right I'm around the other side I'm just going to squeeze a bit of this stuff on here just washing up liquid pressurise it up just see it pouring out of there that is where my leak is Right, so I'll have to take that off and uh, sort that leak out somehow. Just taking the uh, carb manifold mount off, and you can see it's definite fuel. You know, if I smell it, then it's escaping around here. So I naively thought this rubber bit would seal. It doesn't. So I think I'm gonna, rather than just using sealant all the time, put an O-ring. I have a cut a groove in here to put the O-ring in or cut a groove in the uh, aluminium that it mounts to. Probably the latter, as I think it would be a uh, better bet. Right, I've had a good look at this reed valve as well. It seems to be sealing well on this face. As you can see, there's not a lot of fuel remnants. But if you look on this side, I'll try to wipe it off. Before it vap vaporises off, there's fuel around here. There's a bit here, but it seems to be escaping here. 
and I did a elite test, I put a makeshift o-ring to seal on this side and uh, pressurised it again and there was there was some coming out of this side here so that was that side and if you look there it's actually gone through that gasket so it's cut through it so I'm having issues getting this to seal I'm going to try getting an o-ring to fit around there and obviously put an o-ring groove in there to see if that's going to help me out because I don't like sealing stuff up A, I've got to wait for it to cure B, it's the right paint to get apart again whereas no rings reusable and uh, it generally seals quite well Right, I'm not going to film the machining but just a quick setup. so I've scribed a line 35mm inside diameter I've got my little tool that I've ground up uh, to give me the correct groove size and I'm just going to use this as a mock-up get that set which gives me 35mm inside diameter and then I can machine the other bits for the o-ring hopefully that works right back to cut the first o-ring groove I've lined it up because the hole is slightly oval anyway so I've lined it off I've scribed some lines where 35mm inside diameter should be and I've lined up off them and I've also set my dial up so I need to make a cut of that for the inside then I wind it out 2.5 and that so it's half a mil just to finish the uh, groove off and then the o-ring fits very nicely these hopefully will stop the leaks uh, it's 35 mil inside diameter 1.5 mil thick and I've cut an o-ring groove in each of the parts so I think that bit goes on there that'll have one in there that'll have the manifold on and then inside I've got this which is going to sit up against there and seal the revalve at the back this one the later model it's got these holes here so I'm going to epoxy these up and then it will do the same with that so initially I'm going to build it up with this one so that's what I'm going to do now and then do another leak test okay we're all set up. This is the moment of truth, will it? No, it won't even pressurise. What is going on? Coming out of that bottom gasket now. <laughs> That's the next weak point. Right. I've caught something for that. So, not easy to get the camera in. I'm going to try the standard gasket. The issue I had, I'm worried about, there's a little bit of a hole there and it will come through here and this standard gasket doesn't fully cover it. Okay, outro. Uh, as you saw today, we made the uh, leak down tester and we found some leaks. I'm still having issues. I think that there's basically a fundamental design or the way I've gone about this first block where it fits in because the holes are so close, it's communicating air all the way through and it's proven really difficult. So I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board now. However, on a positive note, I have made a leak down tester which does actually show me. The failings of my intake which is good and also behind you'll probably see some of the pit bikes I'm gonna miss lots of pit bikes trying to get them ready one ready for sale and uh, a couple ready for my son Tom to start riding again so again next time hopefully I'll have a new intake and it won't be leaking and I may actually get to the dyno there's a bit of a theme here that I keep kicking my own ass uh, and my inexperience is showing through now however I'm not going to give up and I will get this to work and I will get it to dyno and we will eventually get this to 100 mile an hour. So if you want to join me on that journey then if you're not before already then please subscribe, give us a like, give us a comment. Thank you very much. Cheers.